evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about resolving vectors. Today, in my previous video, I did about scale diagrams. In this video, I'm going to look at using mathematics to solve a question here. And by using mathematics, I'm talking about taking components. And I've got an interesting approach to this that you can actually use to find out what this resultant force is. So on the board, I have my scale diagram and I have said it's 120 newtons and it is 10 degrees from the horizontal or 80 degrees from the, um, uh, 10 degrees from the vertical, 80 degrees from the horizontal. I'm now going to take a slightly different approach to this and I'm going to look at this by taking components. So on my diagram here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to label the forces one, two, and three. One, two, and three. And I'm gonna see how much they're acting in the X direction. And I'm gonna see how much they're acting in the Y direction. So number one is acting in the X direction. But I tend to say that the right is positive and up is positive. You can say the other way if you wish, but this is normally the conventions that are used. So 20 is going that way, so that is in the negative direction, so it's negative 20. Now number one is not working in the y-axis at all, so it would be zero. Number two, is not working in the x-axis, but is working in the positive y-axis. Now this one's hard, a bit harder. This is 40. This is number three. This is working both in the positive, in the y-axis and the x-axis. So this is when you need to take components. Here. Yeah. This is in the x that is in the y. So remember from my components video that this here is the hypotenuse of any triangle that you make. This is my angle, so this here is my adjacent. So with using so, do it here, so ka so a, I have the adjacent for the x direction and the hypotenuse, so I'm going to use cos. So cos 30 equals f of x over 40. So 40 cos 30 equals f x. So that is what I'm going to put in here. And as you can see, it's working quite nicely in the positive direction. You can of course put that into your calculator, making sure it's in degrees. And that's 34.64. Please remember, do not, okay, um, put things into third form. So in my calculator, this called itself 20 root three. You can't put that into an A-level physics paper. You must put the either significant enough significant figures or into decimal points. If we look at this Fy, I can put that at 60 degrees if I wish. And I can say that I've got the adjacent again and 40. So I can say cos 60 is Fy divided by 40 and 40 cos 60 equals Fy. That is 20. <coughs> so I have worked out the components of each of these forces in the x and the y direction. I am going to add these up. 
to find out the total amount I'm working in the x direction and the total amount I'm working in the y direction. So minus 20 plus 34.64 is 14.64. 100 plus 20 is 120. So I'm working 14.64 newtons in the x direction and 120 newtons in the y direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a diagram to represent this, a vector diagram. And because I'm only working in the x and the y, the angle between them is only 90 degrees. So, again, this is my spell diagram. This is my uh, resultant vector diagram. So I've got 14.64 acting in the x direction. And I've got 120 acting in the y direction. And I want to find the resultant here. This is a right angle triangle. You can use Pythagoras to find this. So, this equals the square root of 14.64 squared plus 120 squared. That is 14.64 squared plus 120 squared. Square root that. And I end up with 120.9 newtons. If I want to find this angle here, I need to use trigonometry again. So I'm going to use tan theta equals opposite over um, adjacent. So 120 over 14.64. Uh, so 120 divided by 14.64. And then you get an inverse, so tan to the minus one of that. That's 83 degrees. Now we've got both answers, we can compare them. So according to my vector analysis, looking at components, my resultant is 120.9, and the angle from the horizontal is 83 degrees. With my scale diagram, I have said the resultant force is 120 newtons and my angle from the horizontal is 80. That's not half bad. It's showing both the validity of both of them. This one, of course, is got a degree of error. It depends how well you drew it. Did you draw it to the right angles, etc. This method is the more accurate method. It's the method that's only using the numbers. There's no error involved with drawing. However, they both give valid results. This one is very comparable to this one.